Sally and husband Mike were herding cattle into a trailer to move them into the next field, but one bullock didn't want to play ball. This one cow had got in amongst them and he wouldn't come out. Now, Mike's unease began to grow because a lifetime of cattle farming had taught him how tetchy these beasts can be. I think a lot of people haven't got any idea whatsoever what a cow can be like. One which it appears totally placid before can just turn on you and attack you out of the blue. For a few tense minutes, all seemed fine. And then all of a sudden, it just attacked Sally from out of the blue. And then I saw the horn enter her mouth. As Sally's shell-shocked family looked on, she was slammed against the metal bars of a gate and then dragged over it as the bullock escaped into the fields. You see it happening and you know there is nothing you can do and you have to sit back and watch it. Still speared on the cow's horn, Sally was dragged along for a further six metres. She only broke free when her jaw snapped in two. Her body slammed to the ground as the cow sped away. And at that moment of time, I thought she would have been dead. I thought, you know, there was no way she would have got up from that again. Sally was somehow still conscious, but one look down instantly revealed the severity of her injuries. And you could see the jaw was actually not quite where it was supposed to be. Terrified by the extent of her bleeding, Mike now called 999 and prayed for a speedy response. But it wasn't a case of every minute counted, it was every second. And I knew that unless an air ambulance came, she would not survive. Within minutes, emergency services arrived on scene to find Sally's jaw quite literally hanging off her face. Uh... Two nice chaps came over and asked me to move my hand away. And I think they got a little bit more than they bargained for. <laughs> Having secured her jaw with some heavy-duty bandages, paramedics now rushed Sally to A&E. It was very obvious very quickly how severe and potentially how life-threatening this injury could be. The cow, as it had torn through the tissues, had created an alleyway, literally down by the side of the tongue, through the floor of the mouth, and then right down into the neck surface itself. So you could see the blood vessels literally pulsing away deep in the tissues. The blood vessels in the neck are crucial. The internal jugular vein, as well as the brain's main supply artery, run through it. So if that area had been affected by the injury, then we'd have had catastrophic loss. Amazingly, the cow's horns had just missed the vital vessels, one centimetre to either side, and the attack could have been fatal. But Sally wasn't safe yet. The surgeon somehow had to reconstruct her shattered face. Having identified which bits of the jigsaw are present, we then bring those pieces together, um, and then having done that, put titanium plates across that wound. Once screwed in, these plates fix the bone in place. Crucially, they also allow for some movement, which is essential if the bones are to heal. The next stage is tissue repair, taking particular care to seal up any holes in the area surrounding the mouth. We need to close the inside of the mouth because it needs to be a watertight chamber that will hold saliva, will allow food to come into it and move to its normal places without going down into the neck. Clearly having breakfast coming out of your neck at a later stage is not ideal. The complex operation proved a resounding success and incredibly, it wasn't long before Sally's face was almost back to the way it was. Within three weeks, back out, coat on, hat on, back in with the eyes off again. She's managing remarkably well, speaks incredibly well, um, and really has made an excellent recovery. I can't fault the work the surgeon's done. They've done a fantastic job. There were so many ways in which she could have died. She was lucky.